team situation with some management, you've, you've got a team around you in as much as you've got your staff, assistant coaches and so forth. Um, you expect them to be skilled in the management side of things because it's, it's all right you being there, but oh, they're yeah. there with these other guys too. Yeah, well, again, they, they most of the coaches and, and trainers and so on have, a again, a feel for the players and they have a feedback thing happening all the time mm. uh, in their own field. For instance, the, the conditioning staff are always dealing with players about their conditioning, but in doing that they also get a relationship developed with each player about who can train to what level, who's got a tougher attitude to it and so on. So there's always that um, that understanding of that side of the player. Uh, the medical staff are the same, who can play with an injury, who can't, so you know, who are a little tougher than, than others in that regard. Um, who you've got to push a bit and who you've got to put your arm around. Um, so yeah, they are all got their own little areas and feedback from the t in coaches' meetings, and which includes your staff, uh, the, all these things are discussed. So you have a fair idea of the personality of the player, his ability to handle situations, um, how he reacts to things. You know, uh, you know when he's, you know, when things are not going well for him, um, when things are really tough at training, how he reacts, and so on. The, the staff generally, you know, all of a sudden there's a sort of a, a picture painted of the, yeah. of the player. Yeah. So you have a fair idea of strengths and weaknesses of, of each athlete. So just summing up, Tim, um, is there a limited team that, uh, to man management or is it just an ongoing work? Each year you learn something more? Oh, it's ongoing. I don't think there's ever, there's ever a stop to it. There's no doubt about that. Because they mature, they grow as they get older, they, their needs change and of course motivating people is around their needs and um, uh, you know, uh, when they first come in for instance it's just to make first grade. When the, once they make first grade it's it's um, you know uh, winning a competition. If once they've won a competition, maybe it's representative football. Once they've represented, there's always you know what else you know where where are we going from here? You know what what's going to spark me? You know, um, Mal Meninga came in to see me when he he made three kangaroo tours and we've won back to back premierships. He played for Queensland. What else was there to do? You know? So those sort of things. And he's thirty. I remember now, 30, 32 years of age or something. So, you know, trying to get some reason for him to continue to play and turn up and train and punish himself mm. at the, you know, in the training park, on the training park was, was something that he was really battling with at the time. So, you know, it doesn't matter what age they are, mm. uh, what experience level, they're always, it's always an ongoing uh, thing, yeah. yeah. Just they all walk different lines, don't they, Tim? And then on Saturday and Sunday, you got to try and make them walk the one line together. Yeah, it is. As I say, it's 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 the secret. But of course, if you could bottle it, if you could if you could come up with exactly the right ingredients, um, it's always changing. You know, that's the thing. Again, the personality. To, to today's generation, for instance, compared to mm -hmm. two generations ago, where I started coaching, uh, they're a different group of kids. It's a different group of people again. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how over the years we, you know, we, we're different from our grandparents. You know, so after another couple of you know, another couple of generations, they're a different breed of kid again. And, uh, you know, they come straight from school into professional sport. Things at school have changed. Discipline at school, discipline at home has changed. Uh, you know, I went through the, uh, the good old Christian brother, Morris brother, got a strap if you, if, if you needed it type of system. And um, they don't do these sorts of things now. And uh, so, you know, discipline, sometimes the first discipline they run into is, a, is in professional sport in their sport, where they've actually got to turn up on time and they've got to do all these little things that, you know, they're not, they don't, aren't required at school now anymore, let alone at home. So, yeah, there's, there's lots of things that um, are continually changing, you know, uh, and, um, uh, but it's a challenge and it's a challenge that, you know, you, it makes it, you know, every morning you wake up with something new to do, so I suppose in many ways it's, um, it keeps you young in that regard, but, uh, it also uh, grazes you too by the same token because you know the the issues that you can often find out too late. I wish I'd have known that before the game or before this week and so on. You know, there's, there's always one slides past you, uh, and you're forever trying to make sure that you've you know, dotted the i's and crossed the t's in in each of those areas. Uh, but walking that fine line of not trying to overcoach. You need to know and need to direct them. You need to be able to know what's going on in their heads, the issues they've got, uh, and is 
that going to affect their football, which it will obviously in their preparation that week, and you need to be on top of all of that um, without actually interfering and jumping into their lives too hard. It's a balance that you continually strive to find. Well, Tim, it's a fascinating subject. We could talk for hours. Look, thanks for your input anyway. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Good night. Thanks.